love is to relationships like blood is to our body. Imagine, what can we do with a body that doesn't have blood running through it? Well, the most logical thing is that the body dies. It is the same in our relationships. If there's no dialogue in our relationships, our relationships die. I remember taking or delivering this course that uh, has a formula that, I, that really shook me in my understanding of what dialogue is. And it says that our conversations are our relationships. So if we have a conversation of an open conversation where dialogue exists, our relationships are open. If we have a, com uh, a conversation with lies, our relationship is a lie. If we have a conversation of power, then our relationship is about power struggle. If we have conversations of um, uh, submission, then our relationship is about submission. But here comes dialogue. And dialogue is that type of conversation where we listen to each other with our eyes, our heart, and our mind. Just like the Japanese sign of listening. And uh, I'll see if I can put it on this video. But um, listening completely, being present, being able to suspend, to suspend our positions. And from my perspective, it's not easy. It's not easy. Not easy for me. And I'm not sure if, if there are people that find that easy. And maybe with experience, it becomes easier and easier because our egos are that part of ourselves that want to compete, that want to compare, that want to criticize, that want to judge, that want to uh, condemn, and suspending, really. And in order to have a dialogue, we have to get to the ability, to the moment when we can suspend our positions and just listen completely to the other person. That is true dialogue. That is the dialogue that has been equated with love. Really, it is, it is uh, listening with empathy, with all our being. Now, yes, is dialogue challenging or difficult? Uh, for me, it is. But I'm aware, now I'm aware that there is a tool, that there is an awareness, that there is a decision that I could make when I'm listening to someone. And I could make the decision of listening and not defending, not denying, and not avoiding, especially difficult conversations. Because a dialogue is very easy to have when we're talking about a party that we went to, or the, you know, the dress that I bought, or the trip that I made. That's easy. People get engaged, and you know, there's fun, and there are questions for some people. You know, people ask and want to learn more. But when there is a difficult conversation, and we call it a challenging conversation, when there is a conversation where the relationship is losing blood, as an analogy, when the relationship is dying because there are emotions and feelings that have not been brought to light, because there are misunderstandings, because there are perceptions that are not being explored, because of uh, things underneath a relationship, then dialogue is challenging. And in order to go through a difficult conversation, I like to provide a tool that we use, um, that I use in my coaching. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll do that in a minute. And the tool to have a difficult conversation here is a eight step process. And I'm just gonna give you the processes, the, the main processes right now, and then we're gonna go into detail. But number one is inviting that person that you need to have that difficult conversation with, inviting them to have the conversation, to actually have the conversation. And you know, saying something like, you know, hey, uh, Peter, I um, I'd like to talk to you. Do you have a minute? Could we could we sit down and have coffee and have a a, a chat? So in a very friendly, in a very uh, cordial, in a very approachable manner, to invite that person to have a conversation. And I have to tell you that from my experience, it's very easy to do, and people receive it very well when it's done from an intention of creating a better relationship to looking at something. 
pa uh, step number two is uh, to bring an observation and very very important that we look at the word observation we're not going to talk about a judgment we're not going to talk about uh, something that I want to criticize I like to talk about an observation what I observe and this is a process where we learn that uh, observing something and describing it in uh, facts without a judgment without um, a label is very important so for instance instead of saying to someone mm, you know Peter you are very irresponsible you always come late and uh, you know you interrupt my, my, my classes so saying something like uh, Peter last Friday uh, you came at uh, 9 o'clock instead of 8.30 as it was scheduled and um, coming at this time interrupted the, the class as, as you came in. So that's an observation. is you just describing the facts very clearly with no judgment, with no labels. And we could talk about it later on how to, how to get to express observations more so than judgments with labels. Step number three is apologizing. And I have to say that this step is the most transformational step that I've found in any conversation. And the reason why is because I put myself in a position where I said I apologize for being part of this problem. The moment that I apologize genuinely, then we have to have a conversation at the same level. I am not there to blame you or to judge you. We are here to solve a situation that is not working in a, in a, in a manner that uh, is productive. So for instance, I could say, Peter, um, I apologize because I didn't let you know in advance. I wasn't clear as to the importance of coming at 8.30. And uh, uh, that's, that's a part of my problem. And I'd like to, we would like to work on solving this situation. So I apologize, and again, I repeat, and I emphasize this, this, this piece of the, of the tool is because it is it takes humility right away uh, as I said in, in dialogue we have to be able to suspend our ego and this is the step that um, uses the part of the dialogue when I suspend my ego I'm not here to uh, make you feel bad I'm not here to correct you I'm here to have a conversation so that's apologizing number three is appreciating is appreciating uh, something that this person has done well so for instance, say, Peter, I appreciate when you, um, when you call me and when you bring reports on time. I think that part of your job is done outstandingly. And uh, I really appreciate that. And the reason we appreciate is because scientifically, it's scientifically proven that for someone to hear something and to be part of a solution, the brain has to be open or, and the heart has to be open. And to open the heart, and the brain we need to hear something that is positive because negativity only closes us more and more and more and again we could expand on this later on so appreciate it then we propose we bring the consequence of not doing something or of not changing the situation so I could say something like Peter if um, if this doesn't change if um, if we continue to come at 9 instead of 30 then the group is going to um, is going to begin complaining and is going to really alter the dynamics of the uh, of, of the training and uh, I appreciate if we look into it so that's the consequence and then I bring and then the next step is to bring uh, the outcome the an objective a desired outcome so what I'd like to see is um, is for you to come in at 8 30 and if there is a problem, if you are not able to make it for X or Y reason, please uh, text me before 8.30 so that I'm aware or something like that. So it's, it's, um, it's giving, giving a solution that could work uh, or a desired outcome from my end because later on we're going to look at the other side. So uh, that's my end. And then I make a request and I said something like, uh, it is important that our classes run smoothly and that uh, all participants are comfortable during the uh, five-day training. 
and uh, that's the, the next step and then finally I said uh, I'd like to hear about you and then I stop here and that's when the dialogue begins and I suspend everything I listen openly to his or her side and then we began uh, uh, agreeing or uh, making an agreement to come up with a solution. So I'm going to post uh, uh, th these steps right after this conversation, right after this presentation, so that you can look at it again. So let me just review once again. First is inviting, then is talking about an observation, then is appreciating. After we appreciate, then I talk about the consequences of, of what is happening. Once you talk about the consequences, then I talk about the, um, the desired outcomes. What is the objective? What, what is it that we want to see happening? Then, I, uh, once we talk about the outcome, I talk about the request. Uh, what, what from my end, like to see uh, happening? Uh, what, what is my request? What do I need? And then finally, I invite the other person to present his or her point of view. This tool has been used uh, in many areas, and uh, the responses that I get often is are are that uh, you know we probably do this consciously, I mean unconsciously, but having a structure uh, that I can look at it and uh, revise before I'm having a difficult conversation is very useful. So now let's look at the eight steps in one statement. But first of all, of course, the invitation. So we could say something like this. Hey Peter, I'd like to have a conversation with you. I'd like to talk about something that is important for both of us. Um, could we meet, let's say, Thursday or Friday in my office at nine o'clock? Is that if that's a good time for you? Okay. Looking forward to our conversation. See you then. Now let's look at the uh, the steps in one whole statement. So Peter, thank you for coming. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, here's what I'd like to talk about it. For the last two sessions of our training, you've been coming at 9 instead of 8.30. And this has caused a little bit of an interruption for, for my, my presentation and a participant's presentation. Now, I have to appreciate that you bring a lot of enthusiasm to our classes, and I like that. Um, and also, I want to apologize because I know it happened last uh, two weeks, and uh, I didn't let you know. So I should have have been more um, more clear as to the importance of you being here so I apologize for that now the consequences of you you know doing this uh, again and again are pretty harsh because uh, interrupts the dynamics of the group and I really appreciate that uh, I would really like these classes this five-day training to run as smooth as possible this is a very important training for our team and for the organization so Let's see what we can do. I'd like to hear your point of view. At that point, I stop and then I listen with my ears, eyes, mind, and heart completely and suspend any of my positions because that's where the dialogue, dialogue begins. 